Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Rajiv S. Khanna from immigration.com, the law office of Rajiv S. Khanna PC. Uh, I had tweeted a story uh, today about Obama using executive power to affect immigration laws. Uh, some of the dreamers are quite confused with this story and they're not quite sure what this means. Um, this is where the story appears. Uh, let me explain to you what this means. Basically, this story talks about the president acting beyond the powers that a president should have. That's the allegation, that president is actually, that he has become in charge of making laws instead of merely executing the laws, putting them into effect. Uh, to understand the background of this, you should quickly read on separation of powers. Just um, Google or whatever search engine you use, separation of powers. I'm just opening a Wikipedia page. This is not the best treatment of separation of powers, but for our purposes, it's okay. The idea is, in order to prevent tyranny, in order to have one entity in the government become supreme and therefore become like a dictator or a plenipotentiary. We want to prevent that by distributing power. And we do this in the United States and many other democracies in the world by distributing it between three um, structures in the government. The legislative structure or the legislative branch is the Congress, which passes bills, which means this is the branch that issues the laws. The president, who represents, who is the chief or the CEO of the country, um, he is supposed to execute the instructions of Congress. But remember, instructions by Congress are given in the forms of laws, which are by their very nature quite broad. The president has to fill in the blanks. Nobody can write laws that cover every possible contingency that can crop up while the laws are being executed. So of necessity, the president does have some discretion and the judiciary basically reviews the laws and makes sure that they are constitutional. So separation of powers. Now, what does this story talk about? And I'm coming back to the, the tweet. Um, the question asked was, well, how does it affect dreamers? Well, it does not directly affect the dreamers, but it speaks of a um, conflict or a perceived conflict in the way um, President Obama is passing the laws and uh, executing the laws. So let's start by some of the highlights of this story. I'm working off of a PDF document because I could highlight it. First, element is that President Barack Obama did not wait for Congress to rewrite the nation's immigration laws to help millions who are illegally in the United States. One example is the DACA, the DACA uh, Deferred Action for, 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 for Dreamers. Um, it is said that he's making laws without waiting for Congress to do so. Um, he's using executive actions to affect millions of people, which is a part of his pattern. Uh, some people are saying it is not so much that he doesn't have the authority to do this, but it's the degree to which he is doing it. He is basically taken over making of the laws. And there's anger on both sides of this issue. People who support immigration um, say that he hasn't gone far enough, and the opponents say that he's gone too far. Um, as I said, he has the right to exercise discretion. He has to. Um, this, is, this is true. Um, Critics say that he's violating the Constitution because the Constitution requires separation of powers. Um, there are uh, Congressman um, Representative Robert Good Goodlatte has said that um, he's the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. He said that uh, Obama is picking and choosing which laws to enforce, which is beyond his power. Um, that's another way, way to look at it. And people who are criticizing him also say that, okay, so you, as, as a settled principle of 
American governance, the prosecutors have the authority to decide which cases to prosecute and which not to prosecute. And by the same token, um, president has the right to decide which cases he wants to deport people or remove people and which cases he does not. Um, but you cannot do it as a group policy, although there is plenty of precedent for it. Um, it's been done many, many times. Um, one of the questions asked was, can he put a moratorium on removals? In other words, can he say, I'm not going to remove anybody from the United States? And the answer to that, of course, legally is yes, but it will be a very bad idea because it creates bad blood um, um, with Congress. Uh, it's unnecessary to have that kind of uh, complete moratorium. Um, and this story goes on to um, very briefly touch upon various areas because this is a very um, hefty debate. We can go on forever with this. The story touches the outlines, but this is an important issue that it touches. So um, they are giving an example that in 2011, um, we had a memo where we were going to deport only the most serious criminals. And that actually makes sense because the nation's immigration courts are so badly backed up that if you start deporting everyone, you will never make it. We want to deport those people who are the biggest threat to national security or law and order. Um, so anyhow, that's what the story is about. I don't see any um, direct implication for dreamers, but it's important to understand what the debate is all about. Good luck, guys. Every other Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we host um, free community conference calls. Everybody is welcome to join. Some people post questions ahead of time. You can take membership in our forums. Uh, all of the details are there on our website, immigration.com. You can take membership uh, ahead of time. And, um, you know, it's instantaneous. It happens right away. And post your questions beforehand. Or you can just log in. Uh, the phone number and all are provided, 202-800-8394, 1230 Eastern Standard Time every other Thursday. We have uh, free apps for both Apple iOS platform for your iPhones and iPads as well as for Android. Just look for immigration.com, immigration.com, the period dot, and uh, the application should show up.